Hello, welcome to Strawberry Island Farm Take 2. I'm Christy. Um, today in the chapel we have Psalm 63.3. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. So just trying to keep it positive. Um, it is what it is. Life goes on. Anyway, so today I have a couple of things and I'm going to try and make it short. If you notice, I did not do a sewing one last week and I'll explain this week why um but yeah a lot going on but not too bad does that make sense it's like yeah there's a lot going on but yeah okay sorry I had to fix my phone there didn't want it going off while we're podcasting so all right last week I podcast and it was my birthday and when I got to work, the girls had gotten me a gift. And it's from Hearth and Harbor. And it's a cute gift. It is not something I would have bought for myself, but it's pretty amazing. So, uh, it was a crochet kit, is what they called it, from Hearth and Harbor. And it had 15, this is just one of them, you'll get to see the other two in a minute, 100 yard skeins. Okay. It also had this cute little stitch with love bag. And it had this little kit, which I have a thing I'm working on. So, um, everything in this kit, there are, I don't know how many, and I have one in with what I'm making, but it's got like nine of these, and it's got a dozen of the aluminum. It's got little snippers. Um, it's got measuring tape, thread, uh, not thread, needles, uh, the plastic tapestry needles for weaving in. It's got stitch counters that actually go on um, knitting needles. It's got the tips that go on knitting needles. It's got lockable stitch markers, and then it's got the little slide-on stitch markers, which I was thinking I wanted some of these because they're easy and they just, they're round and they snip on, clip on. I know that most people use them for knitting, but I really kind of like them for crochet and I didn't have any. And then it came, this thing had all the little dividers so I can change this to be whatever I want. Um, right now it's staying this way. Uh, I kind of like the little kit. So got all of that in this kit. So they also got me, um, I guess they didn't, I don't know, I, I guess they didn't know that it came with a bag. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. They also got me this lovely project bag. It's got two pockets on the inside. It's got a zip pocket here in the front. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, I like it. When I got this, I was like, ooh, I want to play. All right, so this yarn is 100% acrylic, okay? It doesn't really have a name brand on it. It just, you know, Hearth and Harbor everywhere. This is the most static, staticiest yarn ever. You pull it out of the ball, and it just sticks to your arm. It sticks to whatever. And I'm not static, okay? Um, not only do I use fabric softener in the washer, I use it in the dryer because there's some reasons, but we can't have static in this house. So, um, I got to play it and I decided that I wanted to make a log cabin style blanket out of it. 100 yards times 15 colors is 1,500 yards. Okay, this is my purple I was working on. I just squished it and all my stuff out. Oh well, it's going to be gone here in a little bit anyway uh, because it's the color I'm working on. So here's another one on my hooks. They have a good flat part for your thumb, which I like. This section isn't as long as I like, but I'm making it. It's working. All right, so I decided I was going to do a log cabin. You know me. I just started with a little square and just started drawing. Labeled my colors. I didn't label them. I just didn't want 
I didn't want berry up against red and that kind of thing. I just didn't want it too much because the berry and the red look very similar, you know. So, anyway, for the last week, I have been working on this. And instead of just stopping because I've got, I just started with seven rows and did it till it was square. I literally just did seven rows, popped it over, you know. I don't know, maybe a dozen stitches, I think 10, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, I started with this little square right here and then went to this one and then up. And you can see I've just gone around and around and around. Well, I decided when I got to the baby blue that it really wasn't big enough for a whole lot. So I've decided to repeat the colors and just use less lines. If it comes out oblong or rectangular or, you know what I mean? Because each row you're using more. And so it the yarn goes. Of course, each ball went and did the seven rows. But now that it's getting longer, each ball is not going to do another seven rows. So um, this row right here is one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I guess I got seven out of the yellow. <laughs> but anyway, um, and let me see the pink and the, oh the black. I know I didn't get seven rows out of it. One, two, three, four. It went five. So it's just going to decrease as it goes and each side will probably come up a little bit less even. But it just means my center will be off center. But it's making a cute little lap throw. I don't know how big it's going to get. But yeah, I have worked on that from the time I got it just because it was cool. And I don't, well, you can't see, but do you see it is staticky? It just clings, cling <laughs> to everything. So, yeah. But it's a cute kit, and I'm going to use up as much as I can on it. Um, I've been doing just as far as the yarn will go on the second row or on the second round. So, who knows? I've been working on that a lot just because I want to get it done. You know, when you get a new toy, you want to you want to do it. So, and this beautiful bag. So, I've been working on that one. But I've also had been working on uh, the bag that was the kit that I got. So, I got through the orange I got bored and I put this little uh, cross in here, this little bobble, I guess you'd say. Um, and so, but I'm on the red and I still have the blue and then the gray at the top. And I'm thinking I'm not going to make the handles the way that the pattern said. Um, pull this out here. So, it has this type of handles. And depending on how tall this ends up being, I may put a longer strap on it instead of this, just putting a strap across. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I This right here, if I'm going to make it into a crochet bag or whatever, um, which it sits up really well, uh, I just think that it probably needs better handles. So I've gotten all the orange done. The gray is on the bottom. I'm on the red and I still have the blue to go. So it's going to, I'm halfway. I'd say no, not even because I've got the red, the blue, eh, maybe a quarter of the way, a little over a quarter of the way, third, probably a third of the way. Um, but it's because I'm splitting up the gray because I want the gray at the top too. So that one's coming along. Um, the last one that I was working on is the wavy, and I haven't really picked it up. It might be a couple of rows longer. I don't know. I don't know how small. So, yeah, still working on it. Um, I did finish the blue uh, cotton one that I was doing. I put straps on the shoulder, put a, a waist 
um, tie in it. And I put cute little buttons up at the top. So I don't have it out here and it's kind of big and bulky, but it's warm. Definitely warm, but I'm glad I didn't make the other sweater with it. And there's a reason why. <laughs> so, um, I'm looking. I can't remember if I told you guys this or not. I, I might have that the sweater that I was going to make out of this book had some corrections that had to be put in there. Yeah. So I just folded it up. Mary Maxim said that, you know, they try hard. They sent a letter saying they try hard, not any mistakes, blah, blah, blah. It was just one of the numbers was off. So when you repeated it, the whole pat through the whole pattern, the numbers were wrong. It is what it is. So I'm really glad that I didn't do that one. Uh, all right. Let's see here. What else we got? The animals. The duck is doing good. Um, I go down and feed him at least once a week, but in the bad weather more. Dogs are doing good. Worm is on a diet. He's gone to grazing way too much, and he's um, <clears throat> getting to be a little chunky uh, to a point where he can't jump up on the uh, recliner chair, <laughs> and it just slowly gotten worse, and so I told the roommate, I say, that's it. We're going to have to take up the food. So we take up the food during the day. He has his food all day because he likes to graze or all night because he likes to graze. Um, worm is in his kennel at night. So he is fed morning and night. And then Hitch is also fed morning and night. And then at night, I don't even pick it up. I just leave it down and Worm goes to bed. So yeah, it is. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I have sinus strange bad. It is what it is. This weekend was Valentine's Day. Well, RJ did Valentine's Day because he has to work. Macy has to work. Um, we watched the Super Bowl. Go Chiefs. That was awesome. That was a good game. And I'm not even into football, but that was a close game. Uh, for some reason, when I was a kid, I thought they took the game took longer. Maybe it's because now you only have so many minutes, seconds to snap the ball and all that. They put all those time limits on it. I don't know, but it is what it is. So anyway, the cheat, we watched that. Uh, I, uh, did a lot of crochet. I, I'm not going to put out a sewing. I didn't do a sewing uh, video last week. I'm not going to put out a sewing video and here's why. Okay. So, I haven't done a whole lot of sewing, but I've been on the machine. Um, I've noticed that some of my jackets, and I'm just going to run and get them. I will show you. <laughs> All right. So, sorry about that. Wasn't really prepared. Wasn't going to talk a whole lot about it, but I am. What I have noticed is when I buy clothes, um, they don't lay like they do on the mannequin. And a lot of things having a lot of uh, clothing doesn't have that final, I call it my press stitch. Okay. It, if that makes sense, it is. Okay. I'll just say it. See this stitch on the outside right here? This has been pressed into place and stitched, and it is now nice and professional. Okay? Um, the outside stitch, yes, you can see it outside. You could have just pressed it and left it, but you didn't. I put that outside stitch on everything that I create. Um, it just gives it a cleaner, more professional look tables wobbling today and I don't know why but clothes have gotten away from doing that and I have spent two days one last week one this week um it went and I have put the finishing stitch or press stitch on every jacket and you can see it's just laid flat beforehand 
this would flip out like it wouldn't lay right. My black jacket, I went as far as putting where this dart is that is on the press to hold this back. Okay. Because it didn't have a press stitch either. And you literally could run your hand all the way up in there like this, you know, they had done the dart on the inside and the dart on the outside and they matched up. But then when they went to lay them, they didn't. this one I like because they did the dart together, like they sewed over top of it. So I mimicked that on my black jacket too. Um, roommate likes to wear boxers. And as we all know, men's boxers don't seal up. So I've sealed those up for them. Uh, roommate just doesn't like it. The barn door open thing, you know. Roommate says it gets drafty. So anyway, I did stuff like that. Just finishing touches that I think should have been on my clothes to start with when I bought them. But they're not practice. I mean, it's not that I had one jacket. I had to do that too. I had two. And a cardigan type sweater thing. It's not really a sweater. It's cotton and it just... Um, yeah. And I was like, why are they not finishing these clothes? It, they just lay better. I, I'm pretty sure it's because it takes time to put those in and we want everything made more affordable so they can cut that seam, the time it takes to take out that seam plus the cost of the thread. And when you're doing thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces, that time adds up. I get that. <coughs> but it's not to my liking. So I went in and finished a lot of things. Some shirts. Um, I have one shirt that didn't have the bottom done right. So I redid it. And part of that I think is because they're using sergers now and it flips it and does it. I don't know, but it's just not high quality. And I've looked for high quality and Trust me, you can find more expensive items. Doesn't mean they're they're better quality. Those jackets don't have. I looked at probably seven or eight jackets like this, and none of them had the finishing press stitch. You know, and, and I call it press stitch because I press it into place, do it, make it look perfect, and then put that final stitch just around everything hold everything in place. So I spent two days revamping my clothes because I want them to look nice and I want them to lay right. So anyway, that's why I didn't put out, that's not much of a sewing video. Um, I had some more mending to do uh, for roommate and for RJ and I just puttered, but there was no, I, I didn't work on the dress. I didn't work on any bags. It was just mending and finishing clothes that I had bought to wear to work. So there is that. Um, other than that, I don't really think there's a whole lot going on. Um, like I said, my birthday, I got a cute, the cute kit. Um, loved it. Uh, roommate got me some granola bars and some little thing, you know, there's nothing I need. Um, but yeah, I got a card. Um, I got texts from RJ and Tori. So yeah, it was a good birthday. <clears throat> Didn't have to cook dinner. Went out to eat. <laughs> so, um, other than that, everything's been going good. RJ seems a little down, but working on it. I also took the time in the last two weeks to get my self in order. Um, I say that just because, you know, our final expenses and final arrangements. Um, I had switched jobs, so my insurance had changed a little bit. Um, I got RJ to where he can take care of everything. He knows my wishes. I think I'm going to write them down just because um, 
just taking care of my last arrangements and that so that I'm not a burden. When my when I pass away, I don't want my kids to have to deal with a bunch of stuff. So especially since I have one that's irresponsible and one that's responsible, the one that's responsible, it's all going to fall on him. So, and I don't want that, you know, let them, let him have time to mourn and time to do and You know, uh, it is what it is. Uh, financially, he'll be fine. Um, he's not going to get rich off my death, but he won't have any bills. My insurance is enough to pay off everything. And then he can, you know, uh, take care of selling what he doesn't need. My car, my, the trailer, if he wants to, he's had the trailer up for sale, but, um, my insurance is enough to pay everything off. So it doesn't leave him with a bunch of debt because it's almost all tied to the farm. So yeah, anything that's tied to the farm pays off done. And uh, I think he'll be all right. So yeah, but anyway, I took time to do that. And, and it's not, a, it's not a conversation you want to have, but make sure you have it. I am only 50 some years old, but it was my birthday. And that got me thinking, you know, what if something was to happen? What if something, yeah. Um, I took out the insurance a while back. So I needed to figure out if it was enough to cover what we need to cover, what I want done. Um, I'm going to, uh, are you itchy? Just thumping around. He just. All right. I think he got hot up on the couch. So he jumped down his head. All right. Um, I, nope. Uh, anyway, so it, it got to be my birthday, and, and, you know, we all are getting older from the time we're born. That's the one thing we all have in common. We're just getting older. So I wanted to make sure all that stuff was taken care of. RJ, of course, it makes him feel uncomfortable, but I made sure that he knew what I needed done. Um, and he's like, okay, mom, but you're not dying tomorrow, but you're not dying tomorrow. No, but I need to have it straightened out. So he knows that I'm not going to saddle him with a bunch of debt. And I actually included enough to pay off the farm because he, it's almost paid off. Um, I think we've got, less, I don't know, we had a 30 year morning. We got less than 10 left. So yeah, it is what it is, but at least this way he will own the farm outright. He will own the cars and trucks or trailers or anything that we have in debt right now. He will own that and it will put back a small, um, little savings for so that he still have to work. He'll still have to make his own way, but he won't have the farm and the, the burdens of that. Um, he just will have to do his everyday expenses. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, hopefully one day he'll take it down to right now. There's, we have two trucks, three trucks, a car, technically his father's car. So that's five vehicles and there's only three of us in that household. So hopefully he will take that down a little bit and get the engines down and all that stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, I had that talk cause it was my birthday. Got all that stuff straightened out and just been taking, doing that kind of stuff, finishing off clothing, um, crocheting. And that is about it. So, and I've had the sneezies and the, the yawning. I don't know what that is. I'm slept really well last night, but anyway, so I'm gonna get off here and I will talk at y'all later. And again, this week there probably won't be a sewing one. So sorry to disappoint. I'm still waiting to hear from our drawing winner and, uh, yeah, hopefully she'll email me, uh, like it's a knitting and crocheting addiction with Sherry or by Sherry or something. I don't, it's in the other video. Go check it out. And if it's you, make sure that you email me, which is in the little box below. Thanks.
and I will talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>